Hey, this is the Hard Truth. Tony Shea, retired by six hour, never settle. I have a choice of what I carry in combat. I always carry the best. I recommend you carry the best. The best is six hour, never settle. We're on the America Out Loud Talk Radio Network, also available on the America Out Loud Podcast Network. Check us out. Project Sentinel, projectsentinel.com.net. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, et cetera, et cetera. And we're joined today uh, by a, uh, they always say special guest, but in this case, he's a really special guest. Stephen Gardner, uh, uh, extraordinarily uh, gifted communicator, discerner, discerner of truth, all around good good egg. And uh, Stephen, welcome to The Hard Truth. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be back on again. Thank you. No, thank you. So I am truly fascinated. And I, 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 you know, I wanted to bring this up for our audience to understand if they don't see you, if they don't watch you, they better. Because one of the, the, the notable features of your podcast and what you do on YouTube is you, you are very ambivalent to political wins. And I hope you take that in a good way. It's like, yeah, I don't care the direction of things. I just want to get to the truth, which is a unique uh, and and um, often ignored uh, element of, of a lot of folks. And, and you go right at it. And I just want to, what is your philosophy? How did you get to the point of where you just wanted to kind of shove aside the politics and get right to the, to the center of, of the issues? Well, uh, I consider myself a little L libertarian. So yeah, I get I'm, I'm very anti-government. Um, I don't believe in uh, overpaying taxes to a government that's going to use it corruptly. Um, I, I believe in letting people live their own life, try to pursue the American dream. I believe in true uh, capitalism, free market capitalism, not government intervention capitalism. Yeah. And so as I was doing my show and it got more and more attention, I kind of got dragged into politics and regularly I'll, I'll meet people on the street. They'll say to me, you just must love politics because you talk about it every day. And I say, no, I'm actually so grossed out by it that I can't not talk about it every day. And so as my channel has gone from zero to 1.5 million subscribers, Amazing. What, <laughs> what I've just tried to do is read between the lines on what is the truth between what Democrats are saying and what Republicans are saying, what the government wants and what the people want, and then yeah. try to give that in about a 15 to 25 minute show every single day. And I noticed you've done a couple things at night, which is good. I've seen you jump on if you thought think something's important, which is great. I think your audience appreciates that. You said, you know, I can't wait. I got to go do this. And I think it's it's very important because what I and others have recognized now, and I'll just admit this to my audience, I don't watch mainstream media. I go to sources I trust. I trust you. I, I trust uh, the Duran. I was on with those guys recently. And uh, I was hoping that Simon Le Bon would show up. Apparently, it's not Duran Duran. It's just one Duran. Who, who'd have thought, you know? But I had a great time with those guys. And obviously, there are uh, other sources that I go to that, that I think are uh, the gold standard and the, they're the gold standard like you, because it's not like you, you actually, you, you're, you're not emboldened to support any political cause. And, and I, much like you have become distrustful of the government because of experience, because of uh, the hell I went through for writing a book called Operation Dark Heart. We've talked about that before. Uh, we ended up winning uh, our first amendment lawsuit uh, because uh, unlike Joe Biden, uh, my ghostwriter actually worked with me and we referred and, and went to open sources. We had, we went to things that were already out. So there wasn't me going to my basement saying, Hey, I found the classified documents. Let me read them to you. Uh, which uh, is like, really? So we'll talk about that, but I really do want to get, get people to understand kind of who you are and why you're here. And I think the audience we go to on America out loud, what should be, if not already, uh, watching you. So without further ado, let's jump right into the morass. So um, my friend Andrew, uh, the senior analyst, political analyst on on, uh, on the internet, uh, just ask him. He's great. And he is great. Uh, Andrew did a, a great thing, uh, video that kind of went through. And the, the summary of his video is Biden lied about everything. I mean, it's just, there's not, there's not much I could see, uh, uh, you know, and like even the whole say your name, say her name thing could have been say her name correctly. 
<laughs> really? Oh, well, legal, legal folks kill people too. Well, that is such a vote of confidence. Well, why didn't I think of that? So let's start with threats. Uh, do you think, Stephen, that it's a good idea for a sitting president to threaten the Supreme Court with the Supreme Court sitting right in front of him? Well, no, I don't think he should have uh, threatened the Supreme Court. Also, I don't think that he should have stood by idly when they were protesting in front of their houses, threatening their lives, disrupting their families uh, after the Roe v. Wade law was overturned. They did nothing to protect those conservative judges. And I believe they would have been very happy for one of them to be taken out and replaced by a new Joe Biden pick of the day. Uh, but no, I don't, I don't believe he should have threatened them on national TV. I think that set a really bad example. I think it was unpresidential, unprofessional. And I, I, I understand what he was trying to do, which was like, hey, you guys have just woken up a really large uh, voting base. But guess what? Half the country's women, regardless of the policy, Half the country yeah. male, regardless of the policy. So to threaten them on something uh, like gender, I thought was a little bit kindergarten. Um, but yeah, I think it was. I think it was an unprofessional, unpresidential move to threaten the Supreme Court on live TV. And to me, it, it's many of the women I speak to, who I'm friends with. We're going to talk about one later today. They're not. They're not. They don't care. They think that uh, the Supreme Court is not the, the uh, location, the political location for that decision. The states should rightly have that. Nothing in the Constitution provides the federal government power to do that. And I'm going to talk more about the federal government thing in a bit because there's several things in that speech that I think laid out a path to increased uh, government uh, uh, inclusion in everybody's lives. Dare I say socialism? I mean, I'm just going to say that word. And uh, let's go right to that. So uh, again, my my friend Andrew did a great thing, and he went through and he, he went, identified correctly that first off, the Biden economy it's not doing well. We're we're not seeing these great numbers. He lied about that. He didn't reduce the debt. He didn't actually do anything to um, benefit workers. Uh, if you look at the stats, and Andrew does a great job of breaking it down, how yeah he recovered most of the jobs. And then the growth actually isn't growth of new jobs. It's actually demunition of full-time jobs and replacement with part-time jobs. It's like, holy cow, Batman, this, this is really bad. So I, I, I don't even know how to put in words how allowing Joe Biden to say that and nobody call him on it is insane. Only Andrew I've seen out of, uh, you know, I mean, I think there's a few folks, in, but nobody's calling him out on this, Stephen. Why is nobody calling out Joe Biden on these utter lies? Uh, well, because most of the people that have uh, a big platform are liberal Democrats. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, like Don Jr. says, there's something called liberal privilege. You literally, you get the coverage, um, you know, lay down cover. Uh, Joe Biden's coming in. We got to protect him. We've got to protect these ideas. But mathematically, let me make it very simple. During the lockdowns, about 40 million people lost their job. Before Trump left office, 20 million of those had gone back to work. We're right. still down 20 million. Now, Joe Biden, the greatest job creator in the universe, has put 14 million people back to work. So we're still down about 6 million jobs. But when you dig in... To those 14 million, as you said, most of them are part time. Yeah. So as a as a father, as a provider, I it, it actually is a distraction from my income, and it is a burden to me and my family to have to split my mind and my talents and my time at two different places instead of just being very effective for my employer at one place. Instead of liking what I do, digging in, using the talents I've developed on my own and the ones God gave me since birth. But if, if my mind and my time are split, then I'm actually less effective for America and I'm less effective for my family. And that's what we're seeing is we're seeing people taking on extra jobs to keep up with the inflation that we were told 
was 9% when in reality it was closer to 25 or 30 percent and the greatest simplest example of that is we went from the dollar store to the dollar 25 store that means it's a 25 percent increase not a nine percent increase but uh this bidenomics they are trying very hard to push away from this concept because what they're realizing is bidenomics equals bad economy well, it is in this 20, 25 percent tax on all billionaires. Are you kidding me? What what is it about the left? They don't understand. You lower tax, you, you increase the margin, you get more money. And instead, they're going the other way where they're trying to burden this thing. They're going to push businesses out of the country, which, by the way, Trump recovered a number when he lowered the the, the, the overall rate. People came back and, it, gee, you can tax people They're You know, they're not as and then you're going to push people out. And the other thing is like any taxes of billionaires is passed on to those corporations which are owned. Essentially, billionaires don't pay any more taxes than they want. They're, they do that. So why is it, knowing this fact, the way things work, why is Biden pushing for this 25% tax? It's a great soundbite. Um, if the majority, let, let me put it to you this way. Yeah. Close to 70% of Americans can't cover a $500 emergency. So if I can't come up with $500 and I'm looking at a billionaire, a billion dollars compared to $500, it, you immediately make that person evil, yeah. even though you know they may have through skill or an insane amount of luck built a corporation or a company that produced a lot of value or else they wouldn't have a billion dollars. They've right. also created a lot of jobs. Now I'm not dismissing the fact that they should probably pay tax. And the reason they don't is they have the money to pay professionals to make sure that they pay the lowest amount of tax. They'll right. tell you that. They don't hide, they don't shy away from that. Many of my friends are insanely wealthy. They don't shy away from having money. They don't feel bad about it. They they have worked for that. But you you now talk to 70% of the country that can't cover $500 and you say, we will tax the billionaires and we will get that fair share, but it doesn't go to them. No, it, of course it, not. It goes It goes to the government, and then it right, goes right. to Ukraine, and it goes to Taiwan, and it goes to every other place except for actually helping Americans. So if the money actually helped Americans, I would be for it, and I believe more billionaires would be for it. But let me just ask this of you, and then the audience can just kind of sit and ponder this, but would you have as much of a problem paying taxes if the money was used correctly? And I believe the answer for most people is no, but they don't. They abuse yeah. us. They steal from us. They tax us every single opportunity they can. And that's why people are irritated about taxes. But let me put it to you this way. If you make a billion dollars and you're going to tax me $250 million, well, guess what? I can very easily and very comfortably live outside of the United States of America for a lot less than $250 million. Exactly. It's ridiculous and it won't pass. But Tony, this is a talking point. This yeah. is a sizzle reel that they are trying to use to make voters angry, but most people see through it. I hope so. Well, that, I'm going to get to that later in the interview. I think um, there's a, an awakening going on. But let's continue with this the sci-fi movie that was the State of the Union. So uh, next item is, um, man, oh, man, if you if you hear Joe Biden talk, he's going to give you uh, everything. You, you know, if you want elder care, I'm going to pay for that. If you want preschool pay, I'm going to pay for that. Uh, I'm going to give you all these incentives to basically allow the government to come into your life. That's socialism, right? I mean, this is literally encroachment into the private sector in areas which the government has no authority. I'm a, I'm a... a I'm a, a constitutional guy. I'm a, I'm a, 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 what do you call it? One of the, a, I believe in the original intent of the constitution. If it doesn't say the federal government can do it, it shouldn't do it. It shouldn't be telling us what kind of cars to buy, what kind of light bulbs to, ball, to, to buy, none of that. And, and yet somehow he's promising all this stuff. To me, this was a Soviet style speech that you would have seen Joe Stalin give to the, to his Politburo saying, these are all the great things we're going to do for the Soviet. What, what do you, what say you on that? 
it, it reminds me of being in high school, you know, hey, I'm going to put chocolate milk in the drinking fountains. Just make me student body president. But here, here's the thing. I, I think if he was given the authority, he would actually do these things. Oh, no, free I, 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 I uh, Free, uh, you know, make sure your retirement is taken care of. Make sure your pension is protected. Here's the here's the caveat. He wouldn't do it if you're American, but he would do yeah. it if you're Ukrainian. So when I say he would do it, he's going to do it for Ukraine, not for you. Right now, the majority of the money that is actually making it into Ukraine is paying for the pensions of the Ukrainian workforce. It's paying exactly. for their teachers, their police, anything related to the government and public safety. That's all being paid for by you and me. Meanwhile, America's falling apart. They're paying in Kiev for like some puppet theater, for God's sake. Stephen, I'm not joking. They actually are paying for a cast to do plays in Kiev. Do you think you or I ever going to be invited to attend that play, even though we paid for it? I mean, yeah. it's, no, it's insane. So, But that's my, my next point. So we have spent cumulatively probably about $300 billion on Ukraine over the past 10 years. Now, any one of these programs, he talked about uh, free college, free senior care. Uh, and by the way, I'm, if, if he wants to like put me, I'm a senior now, I'm going to be getting social security this year. If he wants to give me like a, a, like a ship that I can cruise around the Bahamas. Yeah. Okay. I'm open to that, but I don't think it's what he means. He, they always mean the lowest common denominator. And it's the other thing about socialism. It's like, oh, we want equal outcome. It's like, dude, the only outcome they can guarantee is the lowest one. Don't you understand that? It's like they're not going to give you high grade care. It's like your 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 senior care. It's going to be like a nurse stopping by three times a week, hoping your relative takes his Tylenol. I mean, it's like, anyway, I digress. My point being is that the sixty billion they're talking about trying to send to Ukraine. Stephen, couldn't you use that that money for domestic things? All these great programs. Yeah, I mean, uh, am I missing something that, here? Yeah, the best way that I've heard it put was from actually from RFK Jr. He said, uh, "How much better would the United States of America be if we had spent the nine trillion over in the Middle East on American citizens?" And I, I just think, wow, the the country would be better. But we're addicted to these endless wars yeah. and and propping up. Um, I guess lo losing situations, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine. I yeah. think it's a humanitarian it. crisis. It's an absolute crisis over there. But socialism only works until you run out of other people's money. Yeah. And, and that's what the, if you want equality of outcome, the only equality is that everybody is equally miserable except for the oligarchs. Yeah. The, the wealthy, the elites, they will always be at the top. Just look at Hamas. The leader of Hamas is telling people, use, use your people as shields, uh, use schools, use hospitals. Meanwhile, he's living on the ocean in Qatar as a billionaire because he's yeah. stolen all of that United Nations money. Right. It, it, it's disgusting. And so... Uh, you know, the American people, the American taxpayer, we are being abused. We are being abused. And, and the problem is none of us know what to do. Like, if you ask yeah. me, what's the solution? I, the only thing I can come up with is vote for better people. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about it in part two of the show when we get bring up the, the breast team in. But let's continue that line of thinking regarding uh, domestic uh, pain. Stephen, I, I got to ask you, you don't feel better about Joe Biden going after shrinkflation. I mean, come on. When when you get that uh, box of cornflakes and you see there's like 10 or 11 less, how is it you don't understand that Joe Biden's trying to make sure you get your first full share of cornflakes and, uh, and and that he wants to guarantee that? I mean, what kind of insanity is this that you have a guy who creates the problem and then saying, Oh, I'm going to go after those guys because they have to continue to make money to actually pay their shareholders. Uh, is, is this is this like a form of economic uh, Baron von Munchausen syndrome, right? Yeah, th this comes from most people in Washington D.C. have never run a company, right? They've right. never started a company. They don't never. have any entrepreneur uh, in them, 
And so they just assume that the government can mandate uh, magic and make companies profitable. I hate shrinkflation. When I go to the grocery store and I spend my money and a, a box of chocolate checks is $5 instead of $3 and the box is smaller, that makes me feel bad. And yeah. it hurts and it hurts my wallet as much as it hurts my heart, right? But you can't turn around to General Mills and say, you are going to put just as much in and charge less because right. their costs have gone up. Right. They, you you told them to raise raise wages, so they did. And in order to make a profit, they have to raise prices as they raise wages. Well, guess yeah. what? Everything connected to General Mills also became more expensive. Trucking became more expensive. Gas, those people's wages, trucks, tires, engines, oil changes all of it, it all became more expensive. And so you cannot, the government cannot mandate a company be profitable. They have to actually run a company with a budget, which is something the federal government has never done. Otherwise the Pentagon wouldn't fail all of their audits. The government wouldn't be begging the American people for money every right. three months. They wouldn't be doing continuing resolutions, kicking the can down the road for future generations to pay for their poor spending habits. So, uh, I mean, we, we're living this every day. People are seeing it every day. Yeah. So that that's my point. It's like, my goodness sakes. Uh, again, nobody called Biden out on this. I, I can't believe the Washington Post, uh, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal, for goodness sake, Stephen, why didn't they sit down and do a point-by-point -point rebuttal I mean, why is my friend Andrew, the only guy who did like a point by point, like this is nonsense. Wouldn't the Wall Street Journal serve the American public well by pointing this out that, gee, maybe some of these gadgets and gimmicks, they're just trying to distract you from the core issue of, of the failure of government and Joe Biden trying to insinuate more government control or, or uh, and, and put us more in debt. Now, So let me go to the next point okay. on this, which I think is deadly, deadly bad. And that is the climate core. This thing he threw in there, it's been around for a while, the climate core. He wants to essentially put the climate core on steroids. And this climate core is something that he, Joe Biden, and the White House are pushing. The idea here is you have uh, essentially a Peace Corps type organization with all these climate Nazis. Can I say Nazis? I guess I can. It's my show. Uh, who are going to go out and essentially try to uh, uh, identify enforce and otherwise cajole those people who they feel are not actually acting in terms of what they believe should be the policy relating to the quote unquote climate crisis. Now, let me say for the record, as someone who has a degree in environmental studies, Wright State University, 1986, there is no climate crisis. CO2 is our friend. It actually provides the actual uh, re required components for us to breathe. Steve, did you enjoy your oxygen today? I think you did. Are you Do you enjoy it? <laughs> Thank you. I think we all enjoy oxygen. The idea somehow that he's going to invoke a, a climate folks to go out there and make our life miserable because we don't live up to their standard. What do you make of this? Yeah, it is. It is. It, it did make me think of the brown shirts in Germany where they were essentially, um, they were essentially snitches. They were, they were paid informants to go around and gather information. And then they, they would tattletale. And I mean, can you imagine 20,000 people going around harassing corporations, harassing mom and pop businesses that are just doing their best to, uh, you know, make a living and, and maybe hire a couple of local people. Um, I, I think it's really bad news. The thing that scares me the most is that he wants to triple that number by the time he gets out of office, which means right. sixty thousand, which yeah. is which is over ten thousand in each state, ten thousand people in each state being snitches and tattletales. Yeah, I just don't know how it's constitutional. Like I said, I it's like I don't remember seeing it in the Constitution that says the government can pick uh, what kind of energy you decide to burn or use, since there is no justifiable crisis. And this is what drives me nuts about the way they do things. They will take a uh, a brand of pseudoscience 
and blow it up. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we have one guy who did this hockey puck thing, and uh, we need to really focus on saving the planet. There's there's nothing they're doing that's going to save the planet. It's literally being more destructive. The whole uh, enriching China by having them produce cobalt and all these other rare earths for the purposes of, you know, our, you know, need for electric cars. It's kind of productive, insane, and otherwise not something that that we as Americans should stand for. And I want to talk about in the second half of the show what we should do. We're going to also cover, uh, gee, did you hear that Joe Biden had the, had uh, these classified documents in his garage, Stephen? Wasn't that something? You know, uh, it, it, it's just incredible. So anyway, so we're going to take a break here. We're going to come back uh, more with Stephen Gardner and uh, the rest of the crew uh, at, and during part two of the, the Hard Truth. We'll be right back. Hey, this is the Hard Truths Part 2 with Tony Schaefer and the team. Uh, we are still powered by Sig Sauer. Never settle. I had a choice of what I carried in combat. I always carried the best. You should carry the best. And if you don't, shame on you. Uh, Sig Sauer is the best. Never settle. We're on the America Out Loud talk radio network on, on their podcast network. Check us out. Project Sentinel, projectsentinel.net and .com. And then we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, et cetera, et cetera. And we are joined by the erudite uh Elizabeth Breckenkamp as part two of the show and the ever en en enigmatic enigmatic matic. Can I say that word? I can't even say that word. Enigmatic. Enigmatic Chris Cordani. Uh, those speech lessons really helped. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It's 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 like it's noon and I and I gotta go for a bike ride to get out in the sun. So and we're back with Stephen Gardner. Stephen, thank you for hanging around for part two. So we're gonna jump right into this because uh Oh, it's just like a, a Joe Biden uh, love fest here today because we're going to talk about his uh, classified documents issue next. So I know Jim Jordan. Let's run the tape of Jim talking about this. Joe Biden knew the role, rules. You know he knew the rules. And Joe Biden told us he knew the rules. So, Mr. Hur, why did he break them? Congressman, the conclusion uh, as to exactly why uh, the president did what he did is not one that we explicitly address in the report. The report explains my decision uh, to the attorney general that no criminal charges were warranted in this manner. I think you did tell us. I think you told us, Mr. Her. Page 231, you said this. President Biden had strong motivations. That's a key word. We're getting the motive now. President Biden had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding the classified information in his notebooks. Why did he have strong motivations? Because, next word, because he decided months before leaving office to write a book. To write a book. That was his motive. Yeah. So, Stephen, uh, a yep. two-part question on, on Jim Jordan's comments. First off, come on. It's a de facto exoneration. Uh, he didn't charge him. He's. He, it's like they did. He didn't use the word. And he, 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 her said, I never used that word. No, but you did it. So that's part one. And so was her, was her job to be a fact finder or protect the deep state? You know, I, I, I haven't come to a final conclusion on that. If I'm being honest, because on the one hand, he told representative Primila Jayapal, I did not mm -hmm. exonerate Joe Biden of this crime. And yet, he didn't charge him, which is exonerating somebody of the crime. And so I guess maybe where he's saying, you know, there's there's no official crime to exonerate him from. To me, it, it sounds like semantics. But as Jim Jordan points out, Joe Biden had eight million reasons yeah. to take documents and use that information and then pretend that he didn't get it from top secret sources. I mean, look at Jack Teixeira who leaked that Ukraine was losing the war and the United States government knew it. He's now going to jail. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Biden took these documents and put them in seven locations. He knew he had them. He shared them with his ghostwriter. His ghostwriter was so scared about having those documents, they tried to cover up the story and destroy the audio tape. So as Jim Jordan points out, there is a motive, and that motive was to make millions and millions of dollars. Right. So uh, Elizabeth Breckenkamp, who's here, Elizabeth was part of the team who worked with me to clear my book, Operation Dark Heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elizabeth remembers 
Elizabeth, did I not submit that thing and say, hey, let's let's oh. check this out and get it clear to make sure. So exactly. Yeah. So notably, you know, now that we're here in this conversation, Stephen, uh, when I used a ghostwriter, I referred to open sources, other books which had information mm -hmm. in it. Don Rumsfeld's own comments in public about some of the things were going on. My clear testimony regarding Abel Danger. So, um, gee, if I had uh, taken any of that information, even if I'm, you know, did, did I say I'm a senior citizen? So say, say for example, that <laughs> I'm a senior citizen and I claim, I don't know, to be disabled, which I am as a disabled veteran. Do you think that that if I had taken top secret documents, Stephen, and used them for my book, do you think I'd be given the same grace that hers given to, to Biden? I mean, I'm just looking at your last name, Schaefer. It's not Biden, so no, you you would not have been you That's, would not have been given a hall pass. A, uh, astute and, observation from Steve. Yeah, yes. you you a would be pass. you'd be sitting in jail next to Jack Teixeira and others Correct. who have leaked or sold American secrets to mm -hmm. other nations. Um, this really is a disgrace. Um, and, you know, the mainstream media tried to say it was only two locations. We now know it was seven locations, right. one right. of them paid for by the Chinese Communist Party at the university. The others just sitting in his home, sitting in his garage, uh, completely unprotected. Uh, but no, uh, your name is not Biden. You would not have been given a hall pass. So and that's one of the things that is notable regarding the fact that they didn't even explore why those uh, top secret documents were in his garage. It had nothing to do with the Corvette, by the way. It had to do with a guy named Hunter Biden. And I would argue that that her did not go down certain paths. There's certain paths they didn't go down regarding 9-11. I've had some experience with this dealing with the 9-11 mm -hmm. commissions. Like, yeah, we know there's a dead body in that room. We're not going to open that door. I think there's a similar <laughs> uh, construct here going on of, of why they didn't look at, gee, what were those documents doing in Delaware and who else had access to them? Because by all accounts, Joe, uh, Joe's son, Hunter, had, uh, well, jeans. if it's sitting next to the Corvette, anybody can technically walk up and take a look. Right, Stephen? Am I missing, am I missing something here? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and, you know, Hunter is now being investigated for cheating the IRS $1.4 million. I mean, how's Joe Biden going to get 25% out of a billionaire if he can't even get $1.4 million out of his own son? But I digress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, the, the reality is I, I have to imagine that Robert Hur was under a tremendous amount of pressure, not only from fear for his life and his career mm -hmm. and his family, but also for uh, fear of retribution. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, this, and so I have to imagine as he's going through looking for the truth, he's also looking for off ramps. And the best right. off ramp that he could come up with is this low energy senior citizen with a poor memory couldn't stand in front of a grand jury of 12 people. Therefore, uh, even though there's a crime, we're going to sweep it under the rug because he's too frail. And then I kid you not, a week later, he's hopped up on Adderall screaming at the top of his lungs at the State of the Union. Oh, so yeah. wh which is it? Is he a brilliant president with uh, incredible mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. and a sharp mind uh, and you know insults at the hip, bam, bam, ready to go at any moment? Or is he an old senior that's frail with with uh, a, a sketchy memory. I I don't know who I don't know who Joe Biden really is. Yeah. So, well, Chris, you saw you the, the next personality. Go ahead, Chris. You saw the frail. You saw the frail guy at the State of the Union too when he had to go off script. But I don't want to go way oh. off script here. Uh, Tony, you wanted to let's see. Should we do the Adam Schiff one or should we? Oh, do let's the, do uh, Adam Hank Schiff. Johnson. Okay. No, let's do let's do Adam Schiff next. No. Yeah, a lot of the Democrats tried to make this a Trump fest, but uh, this was even better. Adam Schiff, Ad Adam Schiff, Shifty Schiff, uh, Shifty Schiff, if you will, wanted to uh, ex was was upset at her not for uh, uh, not for uh, ex uh, uh, well not for what you guys were talking about, not for the actual uh, investigation, but I, for not hiding the information he found during the investigation. One quick note: on he didn't hide it well enough. One, one, before you run the clip, uh, Chris, I, I need to know something. You. My friend, my friend Louis Gomert used to have an office right next to Adam Schiff's. And for whatever reason, every time I walked by Schiff's door, it always smelled like brimstone. I don't know why. It's just a mystery. <laughs> <to me. laughs> 
<laughs> Keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring Let's it. hear from you. You had to know would have a maximal political impact. You understood your report would be public, right? I understood based on comments that the attorney general had made that he had committed to make as much of my report public as consistent with legal policy and uh, legal requirements. And you could have chosen just to comment on the president's particular recall vis-a-vis -a, -vis a document or a set of documents, but you decided to go further and make a generalized statement about his memory, didn't you? Congressman, I could have written my report theoretically in a way that omitted references to the president's memory, but that would have been an incomplete and improper report and that, that it did not my reflect question, my analysis you could have the written, explanation of my you could have written your general. report with his with comments about his specific recollection as to documents or a set of documents but you chose a general pejorative reference to the president you understood when you made that decision didn't you mr her that you would ignite a political firestorm with that language didn't you basically what uh what adam schiff was saying was no uh you shouldn't have said that. That's basically I mean, it. it. Right. But Stephen, this is a question for Stephen. So uh, so basically what Schiff is saying, you shouldn't have followed the rules and actually fulfilled the charter you were given by your boss. Is that what I'm hearing here, basically? Yes. I mean, but yeah. what I heard was uh, Adam Schiff saying, why didn't you write this the way that Adam Schiff would have written it, which is uh, to provide, yeah. provide cover for biden and then somehow make this about donald trump yeah um that's what that's what i heard adam schiff saying which is um by by telling the truth you've embarrassed our side of the aisle why didn't you write it to prop up our side of the aisle which is what we do for ourselves mm -hmm. that's a really good observation yeah well, that, that, this is this is interesting because that is exactly what they wanted. And the Democrats oh. there, many of them turned this into a, well, look what Trump did sort of hearing. And one big thing about this is the Democrat vice president, um, Joe Biden, had no authority to declassify documents before no. he took them out of the White House. No. Right. A president, a sitting president, i.e. Donald Trump, had the authority to do so. So when the media says classified documents, they were really formally classified documents. They have been declassified or else it would kill the argument and, no, and it would be a non-story. You're exactly I think right. They're yeah. Still, yeah, they're going to lose the argument in the Supreme Court about Trump. I, Trump has the ultimate plenary authority about what's classified and not classified. I just don't see that coming. Yeah, you're right. So, anyway, all right. Do, do you want to run one more? You want to run, run Hank Johnson to see if, if Guam has flipped over yet from those B-52s we've got parked there? Uh, there, here you go. Now, this is funny because Hank Johnson, a representative out of Georgia, decided to float a conspiracy theory. These are always fun. <laughs> I, I've met Hank Johnson. He's fun. I am not a member of the Federal Society. Ooh, but you are a Republican, society. though, aren't you? I am a registered Republican. Yes, sir. And you're doing everything you can do to get President <laughs> Trump reelected so that you can get appointed as a federal judge or perhaps to another <laughs> position in the Department of Justice. Isn't that correct? Congressman, I have no such aspirations, I can assure you, and I can tell you that partisan politics had no place whatsoever in my work. It had no place in, in the investigative steps that I took. It had no place in the decision that I made, and it had no place in a single word of my report. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Now, the other thing is, who's the idiot temp in the microphone? Okay, that's number one. That's the first question. Oh, yeah. I'm, t I'm tapping mine. You know, just... There we go. But that's okay. You're not interrupting her for some reason. No. But that, that's this this is where they were going. They were going, well, you, you must have done this because of this. You're a Republican. You're right. Or you are, and, he, and he even tries to say, well, you're a member of the Federalist Society, trying to Im imply that. And no, that's not true. So her, look, I understand, Stephen, Tony, you are right. The man went as middle of the road as he possibly mm -hmm. could. The fact is he left the door open for all of us to discuss as to whether, hey, he's really competent to become president of the United States or, or excuse me, be reelected as president of the United States, or um, did he really commit a crime? Fact is, he was a competent or, or mentally competent vice president, excuse me, I had to say mentally competent, who right. read classified information to somebody who did who should not have had that information. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. Yeah, Stephen, what do you think? So I think the summary of our show today, just because we're going through things with this questioning of her, the self-proclaimed 
comments of Biden himself relating to the fact that he lied to the American people. By the way, he won in a press conference when he compared, when he basically said Al Sisi was a president of Mexico, which I did not know that. I know President, I know General Al Sisi. I did not know he was president. Must have been a chapter I missed in his life. But, but he yeah. also said during that press conference, Biden said that uh, there, there's he he did not give classified to his ghostwriter, even though it's it's plainly clear that he had eight million reasons to do that. What should we do? What you know? You said you, this is something. So what do you think we should do about this? Because clearly. Andrew, you, a handful of others, we're trying our best. You know, we're part of the team trying to get the truth out there. And I don't think we have an agenda. Uh, am I am I Republican? Yeah, but I'm not stupid. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that something's uh, just fine when I know it's wrong. So what what do you think we should all do about this? It's like the emperor's new clothes. Yeah, well, my, my first thought was uh, Robert Hur did not make Joe Biden take those documents. So he's not responsible for that fact. Joe Biden did not make him share those when uh, he sat down with his ghostwriter. Uh, Robert Hur did not make Joe Biden either have memory lapse or pretend to have memory lapse every time something came up that might send him to jail or actually uh, be against the law. But they're holding Robert Hur accountable as if he crafted this narrative when reality is he observed the narrative as it was playing out in real time. Joe Biden is the one that couldn't remember when Trump was president, that couldn't remember when he was vice president, that couldn't remember uh, the documents, that couldn't remember when his son died or how his son died. Like these, these were things that Joe Biden said it's in the transcripts that have now been made public. But what, what they're really saying is this makes us look bad, so we need you to be a scapegoat. And Republicans do the same thing. Everybody's going to defend their side of the aisle, but the Democrats are just more vicious at it than Republicans. And so this is what this is what I observed is they're saying, holy crap, this true stuff makes us look bad. We now have to find a scapegoat or some other story to distract the American public. Oh, and Biden's car goes, don't forget that. Okay. Uh, Here, uh, don't uh, forget uh, that. Uh, and uh, one more thing before we get to Tony's takes uh, uh, is Merrick Garland had the option of, of redacting the uh, of senile old man comments. Okay. He did. But well, that maybe time. maybe he chose not to. I don't know. But uh, before we go, Chris, I know you want to get yes. to Tony's takes, but Elizabeth, wanna, you want to bring up the thing about Sheree Curry real quick? Because I want to get Stephen's take on that. So. Oh, um, so basically, yeah, I was trying to find um, her YouTube thing. She has recently, she's been very outspoken against, um, not so Fixed much- it on her Instagram. Yeah, on her Instagram. It's not so much LGBTQ. It's, it's people pushing trans- the whole trans movement on children. And she makes a very good point, a very good distinction. It's like, so we're yeah, know, we're talking about, uh, let me be clear, we're talking about Sheree Curry, our a friend of the show, who does our right, theme Curry. and bumper music, just saying, if you, if you right, watch and the she's show. she's a musician. Hear. She was the lead yeah. singer for The Runaways. Runaways, which you're uh, watching. She's, still the musician. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. And, um, and she's been basically speaking out against, um, you know, basically trying to protect children from the whole trans movement. And, yeah. um, and she's very outspoken. And, you can't really say, oh, she's like talking about, you know, uh, her, you know, being interrogated like it's his fault. It's like, aren't you a Republican? Aren't you this? And you can't say, oh, no, she's a Republican because she grew up very liberal. She's somewhat, I don't know if I'd say she's conservative, but she's like libertarian. She's very level headed. Right. So you can't say that she's, you know, uh, she hates LGBTQ. She doesn't, but she, she, has been very outspoken against people pushing this on children. And, um, and I was just wondering, what, what do you think about that? Just, just in the last 72 hours, the United Kingdom has come out and banned the use of uh, medication related to hormone therapy, uh, related to uh, anything having to do with gender affirmation through medication what they have found through their, their research and their observation is that it is incredibly damaging to children's bodies. Yes. And it's also incredibly damaging to their brains. 
And so the United Kingdom has made the decision to publicly ban the use of those medications in children. And Good my guess that. is the United States will follow, but we have to continue to fight on behalf of children. Yes. I mean, th there's a reason that you couldn't rent a car till you were 25. Exactly. It's because your brain yeah. isn't fully formed. There's a reason that you shouldn't vote or join the military until you're 18. You're not fully formed. Right. Uh, and, and so to say that somebody knows what their gender is at an early, early age mm -hmm. or to fully understand their body, their chemical makeup, their hormones, um, I, I just think it's incredibly dangerous, uh, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to these surgeries and when it comes to intervening with hormones and, and medication that essentially changes somebody from who they are to who they think they want to be. But the reality is most people down the road, they regret it and they try mm -hmm. to reverse it, but now they've reversed it with a lot of health complications. Right. Yeah. I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of people being interviewed there in their twenties now. And like just 10 years ago, um, they were confused and they, you know, their parents were, did not stand up, you know, they, they should have, but I don't want to blame it on too much on the parents either. It's, it's really like the medical establishment. Yeah. They went through all the, the surgeries, the chemical castration, all these different things. And now they're regretting it. And they, and they realize like, especially for women who are trying to be boys and now trying to be a female again, they're infertile. They won't be able to have children. I mean, and, and nobody told them those would be the consequences of, all these, yeah, like you said, the the permanent damage to the brain, to the body, to the endocrine system, to the, I mean, to the whole, I mean, everything. It messes up everything. And that's a really good point. Yeah, you can't join the military until you're 18, but no, we're going to let you cut off body parts when you're 10 years old. Yeah, it's a really good we point. We should talk about that at one of our shows. I have a friend who's observing that firsthand right up close and personal, but I don't want to get into that this year. I mean, I'm a nurse, but I've never worked with people who've gone through that. So I don't know. By the way, Stephen, do you think Joe Biden should go through transition? Do you think maybe that's what's going on with Lloyd mm -hmm. Austin? That he's not really like maybe he's going through transition. Do you think maybe that's what it is? He's really trying to get with the program. Well, um, Biden, Biden has been through a transition, but it's a transition of policy. Uh, he he went from being incredibly hard on blacks, uh, saying really horrible things about them, to now pretending he's their best friend. Yeah, he he was very hard on gays and lesbians, and now he's their best friend. I think Joe Biden will will say yes to whichever group he thinks he can get a vote out of. No doubt. I'll imagine that a very politician good. doing that. How about that? Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is it is about that time. We have a few minutes left for Tony's takes, and that is powered by Sig Sauer. Never settle. You can find never settle. Never settle. Yep, that's right. Never settle. I never settle. And uh, check them out, Sig Sour Inc. at Sig Sour Inc. on X. How about this one? Um, let's see. What do we what do we have in the old mailbag here? Uh oh, um, the TikTok ban was passed by the House earlier this week. However, uh, uh, I'm, there is some major opposition, including that of Joe Biden, who is, by the way, using TikTok as a major uh, component of his campaign. Anyway, yeah. your thoughts on this? It's not a real ban. It's a it's an either get out of here or sell yourself to an American company. Well, Joe Biden is deciding to use it because he's trying to create the image of being a hipster. And uh, uh, look no further than uh, than how I, I I I'm going on the limb here. I'm going to forecast that he's going to essentially channel the Jack Nicholson Joker uh, when he decides to really jump on TikTok. You know, he's going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that permanent kind of big old face, as Stephen just said, he's trying to get in a great state. He's going to have that big old smile. That's going to be it's Joker Joe stuck. Biden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he's he's losing with the younger generation. And so he's trying to connect to them. It's not it's not really working, in my opinion, because he, he just comes across as a, an old feeble grandpa. Oh, and yeah. they're they're not on there. TikTok is used for education conspiracy theory and entertainment. And mm -hmm. uh, he's not going to point out his own conspiracy theory because they keep coming true. Um, <laughs> he's, not, he's not going to be funny because he's not funny and no. he's not going to be educational. So 
he's he's on there. Uh, you know, maybe he'll pick up a vote or two. But this is about getting votes. Where the contrast is, Donald Trump wanted to originally ban TikTok. I did a video on this, so I know that to be true. He's right. now saying, "Wait a minute. Uh, yes, we do need to make sure that there's not a national security issue, but." Competition against Facebook is actually really good for America. And so he's saying, you know, make sure it's not a security issue, but then it's freedom of choice. If that's the platform you prefer because it's, you know, under a minute or under three minutes, then good for you. I don't personally use TikTok because I prefer YouTube. Um, but I, I think Joe Biden made a mistake by going on the very platform he's trying to ban. It looks very hypocritical. Yeah, look, I personally use Instagram, which is Facebook. I, you know, I, uh, uh, I do a lot of stuff on there. I don't do anything that's got me banned yet, although you know the year is young. Uh, but I do You're believe trying. competitions. Yeah, competitions good, but I, I do believe, and I've said this just today on on uh, when the time we're taping this, I was on Newsmax talking about this at noon. Any software that's produced by China, produced by a Chinese company that essentially owns its existence to the CCP, the, the Chinese Communist Party, will do and say whatever it has to to support the Chinese policy of undermining the United States. So I, I uh, you know, I, I was one of those who was a pioneer in what we call weaponized technology. I know what's possible when you have a program on your phone. Let's leave it at that because I will probably get in trouble uh, uh, talking for talking about things which were beyond top secret at the time. Uh, but suffice it to say that if you allow a program on your phone, the chances are whoever built that program owns your phone. Just saying. So mm -hmm. It is what it is. And speaking of it is what it is, we come to the end of another hour. Right, Chris? That went by really quickly this time. It, did. Fast. That's it always is. I told I we did our pre You know, I, I emailed. It was like, this is going to be a fast show, and it has been. So, Stephen, uh, God bless you. I really appreciate you coming on. And, and I sincerely appreciate everything you are doing to help people learn about the reality in which we live, not the aspirations of the left, which really aren't helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I'm grateful to, for the opportunity to come on and to continue to spread the truth as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be back next week with another edition with uh, Chris Cordani, Elizabeth Breckenkamp, the whole team. Uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate your support. Check us out on, uh, on Project Sentinel listen to us on the podcast and we'll be back next week and see you then. Bye.